If there are the best, there also have to be the worst. So here is my list of top five worst tier 10s in World of Tanks Blitz. Now, obviously, the margins between the best and the worst, they are quite tiny and a lot smaller than most people, including myself, always make them out to be. So keep in mind that the margins really aren't that far apart and the best tank can be played terribly and the worst tank can still be played well in the right player. In fact, most of the tanks tend to be just around average. Three hundred is not just a famous movie, but also the alpha damage of the Vickers Light. For some reason, even though it does have a hundred and five millimeter NATO gun, which technically should have three hundred and fifty alpha damage because it's the exact same gun as it is mounted on the Leopard One. Both use the Royal Ordnance L7. The Leopard specifically using the A3 model, and the Vickers CR using a model that doesn't exist. But because the upgrades from the L1 to the L2 to L3 aren't firepower upgrades. They have to still be the same gun functionally. Who cares about realism anyway? What is it have 300 alpha damage? Ask Wargaming. But what I ask myself is, why would you take a vehicle that was already previously completely outshined by the lower tier Vickers CR and actually nerf it even further? The Vickers CR was obviously also nerfed into the ground completely, but why would that be necessary to nerf this vehicle down into the ground? Because here's the thing. What is the exact point of playing this vehicle? Now, a bottom five list like this is always going to include vehicles that are not necessarily terrible, but they're incredibly pointless and outshone by everything else, which is what makes them bad. If everything else is better, then by definition, they're bad. And that is kind of the problem with, with the Vickers Light. It doesn't really fit in well. It's not exotic like a Batshat or a Sheridan with specific characteristics, and it isn't really as high-performing as, let's say, a Leopard or as well at playing one specific thing, like the STB can with its obscene gun depression. So what exactly is the point of the Vickers Light in World of Tanks Blitz, given that it doesn't even have any other special pointless gimmicks that might make it somewhat interesting, like, I don't know, whatever the WZ-55 has, it doesn't really make it all that interesting. It's simply generic, boring, and there is no point in ever obtaining this vehicle, for essentially any reason. And on top of that, it also has terrible alpha damage and a lot lower DPM than something like a Leopard 1. So you're always in a disadvantage. The only advantage this vehicle really has is its enhanced camo rating while moving. But let's be honest here, it doesn't really do anything because any camo rating immediately drops down to nothing once you fire the gun. So it's not really that big of an advantage anyway, especially in a close combat game like World of Tanks Blitz where the ranges aren't really that far. So you have a massive list of disadvantages and basically no advantage to show for it. And there are much better options outside of it. And that is exactly what, to me, makes a bad tank bad. Everything else outperforms it, and it itself has nothing that makes it unique, that makes it superior at just one thing. It is just overall generic and worse. What sense does it make to put my most played tank and also the tank that I have currently the highest account damage in? I've had higher damage games before, but this is the highest recorded one in the Object 140. Why is my most played tank right here? Well, there is a very good reason for that, because this vehicle used to be a long time ago the most dominant force on any battlefield. In World of Tanks Blitz, when this vehicle was introduced, it does suffer very much from the same problems such a Vickers CR suffers from. It has been overshadowed massively, and it doesn't really stand out at any one thing. The third armor has been completely obliterated. It doesn't have any chance of competing with the 62A in terms of armor, or in terms of a Leopard in terms of gun. So it is just in a limbo situation, where again, you have a vehicle that once was absolutely glorious, but Wargaming has decided to sideline this vehicle in favor of other tanks. And while that is the natural flow of balance, it is quite sad to see how far this vehicle has actually fallen from its top down to where it is now. Where it is simply a generic, boring medium tank that doesn't really offer anything unique and extra. And that no matter what other medium tank you might play, be it a Leopard or an STB, 
you are gonna get higher performance out of those kind of vehicles and especially also compared to the T62A it is kind of mediocre now given that the 62A has been elevated to now have also good armor while the object 140 is trying to cosplay a leopard with a worse gun which isn't really going to help it whatsoever especially when also something like a t22 medium exists around it kind of makes this vehicle all round pointless i mean you can put the object 907 in the very exact place as well and even the abysmal amx 30b is now no longer terrible so it is once again just like the vicar's light it is being outshined by all of its counterparts at the medium side The ultimate one-trick pony, the nightmare of any light tank player, the 1AD3. It has one thing and one thing only, and that is a massive gun. It doesn't really have good DPM, it doesn't have good accuracy, it doesn't have any armor or good mobility for that matter. It really just has high alpha damage, and that is just about it. Now, obviously, it's going to be on a list like this, because not only is it extremely annoying to face, it is also very terrible play now you are gonna get your occasional moments of 1400 damage into the side of a medium tank which can be very enjoyable but overall this tank doesn't really add much to the gameplay experience either for the player or for the enemy it very much detracts from the overall enjoyment of world of tanks blitz in total and that is why the 183 is on this list as well because it is just absolutely unenjoyable and terrible most of the time and when it is enjoyable for the player someone else on the enemy team is going to have a really bad time so overall this vehicle doesn't add much positive to the game but it does add quite a lot of negative and that is why it is on here because it's just that damn annoying and before you go into another battle and get smashed by a 183 go smash that like and subscribe button which really help out a lot This is the one I wasn't really sure about, the Grill 15, because at the same time, the MX-50B exists, it is equally as hard to play, it is equally as unenjoyable. However, I do just think that the Grill, because of its even bigger limitations, deserves this spot a lot more than the MX-50B, even though if this list would include six vehicles, the MX-50B would very much be that sixth one absolutely locked in. However, the Grill 15, it is ironically also my second most played tank in World of Tanks Blitz, and it also has fallen massively from its former glory, just like the rest of its tech tree. The Bosic and the Waffenträger were also nerfed multiple times, and let's not even talk about how terrible the Stura Emil is overall. So not only do you have a utterly unenjoyable and horrible tech tree to grind through, which isn't quite the case for the MX-50B, because even though the 5120 is terrible in its own right, uh, the 5100 does have some redeeming capabilities there. So essentially, this tech tree used to be great, but now obviously it has been nerfed multiple times. That doesn't mean that the grill isn't still popular, because it very much is. However, the grill is a paper tank with not that great mobility especially in its traverse it can go very fast in a straight line but as soon as you have to traverse it's really not going to be enjoyable on top of that it is obviously a paper tank and what do you need as a paper tankster that's good at sniping well you ideally want some form of camera rating but you can't even have that because this is a very tall vehicle and most of the time camera rating is decided based on a vehicle's height more so in world tanks pc than in blitz but most of the time the higher the tank the worse the camera rating and also the heavier Nope, not really great there, and the turret doesn't even turn all the way around. So you got downside after downside after downside, and on top of that, it also has one of the worst alpha damages for tier 9 tank destroyers overall, of those that aren't auto-loading. So what really is the point of ever picking up the grill when it has all of these downsides and essentially no advantages to show? I mean, it does have excellent accuracy that makes it really good at specific maps in specific positions, but how many times are you really going to make use of that? For example, on a map like Himmelstorf, this vehicle just absolutely suffers massively. If you get yourself onto a Castilla or Canal, you might be able to get great performances. But overall, this vehicle has a terrible tech tree. It has been nerfed massively. And it's quite sad having to put it on here because I really enjoyed it. And it's one of the very few tank destroyers that I actually enjoy playing. But despite that, it is still not a good vehicle anyway. And that is why it is 
number two on this list. I mean, uh, th this was kind of obvious given that I made a whole video about the CS63's terrible balance a couple of weeks ago. This is my number one pick for the worst tier 10 in World of Tanks Blitz. Currently, because this is a new vehicle, I mean, with something like an Object 140, it's kind of understandable that it does tend to fall down the ranks after being in the game essentially since the beginning. And with the Vickers Light, I mean... Yeah, it, it, it's a light tank, and it has the wrong gun even, so it just happens. But this vehicle, it is a new tank. It has been added very recently to the game, and even though it is still absolutely terrible compared to all the other offers. And if we put it into perspective here, this vehicle is slower than the E50M, while it is much lighter and has less armor as well. So, um... Yeah, that's literally all you need to know about it. It's this is a terrible tank in its entirety. And while the Object 140 isn't great either, it kind of has earned its spot lower on the list because it once was a great vehicle. And the Vickers Light was also once decent, but then has been nerfed. But the CS63 in its entire life, I mean, even the MX-50B once was a good vehicle with it when it's had its three-shot autoloader. But CS63, for its entire lifetime, has been utterly garbage. And that is why it is the number one worst tank in World of Tanks Blitz. But that's just my opinion. And what does that even matter? I'm curious, what is your opinion? What are your bottom five tier 10s in World of Tanks Blitz? Put it down in the comments or tell me that I'm completely wrong and that the CS63 is the best tank you've ever played. I don't know. Put it down there. If it's reasoned and well thought through, is always productive. So put it down there in the comments. I'll see you there, and I'll hopefully also see you for the next video.